So we talked yesterday about access and having access to information and people and actually utilising that, taking advantage of that and advantage in a, in a, in a good way. And um, it's great that you've now got an opportunity to um, either ask or ask about his career, ask about his current career, because um, I'm interested, you know, working with lots of goalkeepers, I'm always interested in how he thought and what he would do differently. So um, I want you to start by, you know, what you've seen so far and, and what you think of these guys being here. No, I'm really, like, I've spoke with Jamie out there, I'm really impressed because I know that from my experiences in playing that um, and what I went through, that this is something that is, is, is really, really big. And I know Jamie would have spoke to you that we train every day, we train kicking a ball, we train the techniques of doing that, but why aren't we training the brain? Um, and why aren't we training the thought, why are we train how we do everything? And if we want to be the best, uh, someone spoke about the elite athletes have the ability to do this. Um, so we want to be elite athletes, everyone here, we want to get better. So let's try and use the tools that maybe someone might have that in their locker or someone might have a natural ability with their ball at their feet. So let's tap into every little bit we can. I'll tell you about me if you like, and then just tell you how, how, how it all came about with me. I was lucky, I, I, I played for my hometown team, I grew. We were a championship team, we were close to pro promotion every year. And as a person, as a goalkeeper, I kept growing, I kept getting better. I was representing England at every level. As, an, as a championship player, I played for England. Um, and that's quite crazy. And so everything was on the up. I then had a big money move at that stage. I went to Arsenal. Um, and then became, so really, I was like a big fish in a, a lower team at Ipswich. So, but a fantastic team got an opportunity to go and play for Arsenal. Arsenal was, at that stage, I think just trying to push for, to win the Premier League again. And fortunately, my first season, we won the Premier League. It was amazing. We won the FA Cup, we won the double, it was brilliant. But I'd gone from being um, on this wave of going good, going good, then going to a massive club and being like a small fry, being like part of everything, rather than being like the, the, one of the top players who everything was done for. And there, it was tough because I wasn't playing, I didn't at the start of the season. I was told, that you guys will be told sometimes, that you, you start, you're my main person to start the season. Pre-season, David Seaman did well, had done well the previous season. So they said, he will play, you've got to fight. Um, I found that hard. When was he at this point in his, in, in his career? So David Seaman was about 38, I would have said. So you would have said, going out in his career. I was 24 year old, you should have been kicking him off out of touch. And I didn't, and, and I didn't get the opportunity straight away. And I felt found that hard. What I did know, and what it was ingrained in me, is a work ethic to work hard. So I worked hard, and that was not doubted. But I didn't have the, you know. And I then became. What then happened was I started to worry about things and thought about everything. I then got into the team and did really well. I had 12 games, 13 games, did really, really well. Everything was going great. We were winning. Uh, I picked up a knee injury and it was in my mind of the plan, but I'd always carried on. And then I started to make I made a uh, mistake in, I think, played, I can't remember what it was, I think it was Charlton who played, and we lost 4 to at home to Charlton. Charlton being a lesser team in the Premiership at the time, and we shouldn't be, I think we got beat 4 2. A ball come across, I went to punch it, hits the back of my fist, and goes into the goal. And I found then. I was on that thing and instead of being, I mean, like nowadays it would be social media and you'd read it on everywhere, instead of being in the local press, I was on the back page of every single newspaper and the picture was me punching the ball in the back of the net and then I used to read, I used to love reading, everyone loves to know how good they are and I used to like reading it and I hadn't had this, I'd had it in the local press and I made a little mistake but I found that hard and I didn't know how to deal with it and then I was, uh, I felt like I was playing games with fear. Fear was my thing. Fear was the thing that took over me. And that's when, when we sat on the board, how do you feel? Fear was my one. Fear and the nerves, everything. So was, was that before? Was that before games, or where else did it affect you? So for me, mainly, it was prior to the game thinking and what will happen. What will this happen? Right. And I had this thing you said about earlier, like the first thing you do. I had it where if, once I made a mistake, I played normal. Once I've done something wrong, I don't mind now. I've done it. That's the 
fear thing, that's the bad thing, and I played normal. And because I didn't have the tool how to deal with it, I didn't know how to change that, and, it, and I found that really, really hard. So then it didn't go great that season, with, towards the end of the season, petered out, and then Everton came in for me. And I played for a bit in that season. I did all right. We finished, I think we finished seventh. We just missed out on Europe and I did okay. But I played for a manager and this was what I found hard. He's it's, it's a fantastic manager, David Moyes, but his whole philosophy was on, let's not get beat, let's not make a mistake, let's do this, let's not um, do the, anything bad, let's make sure we do this and we'll be all right and then we might get a goal. Um, and I just found that it'd be, in my, the way I thought and the processes that I had and the thought process I had is that um, after a game, I think we spoke about it earlier, after the game, I would, might do three or four good saves in the game and keep the ball out of the net and the ball would come in perhaps on a cross or it might be a shot that I spilled and we go away with it and everything. And I remember just coming in after the game, I think we might have won 1-0 once and David Moyes saying, and I might have made some good saves, and David Moyes saying, oh, you were lucky there, you should have done it, Why, you could have lost us the game there. And instead of after the game, focusing on the three, four good stuff that I did, my negative went straight to, to a mistake right. or the thing that wasn't perfect. Instead of, and then I ended up thinking loads and really thinking about mistakes. Don't make mistakes, don't make mistakes. So I got to a stage where I would have been 20, 26, 27 and I'd had a I had a knee injury at the beginning of the, at, the, at the end of that season, had surgery, played the start of the next season, had to have surgery again because it wasn't right. And then they brought in a guy called Nigel Martin who was a fantastic goalkeeper, an amazing guy. I've got no, no doubts about that. And then when I got fit and everything, I got opportunities to play in cup games and I just didn't do well and I just thought, and it, I still had this fear thing. And I just thought, what do I do? And, and at that stage, I spoke to Taylor, it, it was, um, it was a sign of a weakness. I felt, and that's me thinking that if I needed to speak to someone about how I'm playing or how I feel, that that's a sign of a weakness. And if I tell the manager that I want to work with someone or anything like that, then I'm, I'm weak. Uh, Jamie alluded to it earlier that he doesn't work for a club because, and I think this is 100% right, because there we had people coming into the club who was a psychologist who worked for the club or a motivational speaker. And I, didn't, I couldn't open up to him because I was so scared if I say something to him, he's going to tell the manager and not blame me. And I was thinking, how do I, how do I do with that? How do I deal with that? And in the end, I, I spoke to one of the club and didn't go right. And then in the end, I spoke to the guy who was working as an agent, a guy called Dave Manassi, and just said, I need some help. I said, I just feel like I can't do anything. I feel like I'm scared. I feel this. And then he put me in, got, in contact with a guy called Michael Caulfield, who's a who's a psychologist, a really sports psychologist, a really good guy, Jamie you knows him, a really good guy. And then he gave me tools and gave me and changed my thought processes on how we can do things. Now I, I to cut and rather than keep me going on and he gave me triggers and little bits like that, but to cut it's a short a little bit, is that he gave me them tools at 27, 28, 29. And Thinking back now, and this is what really impresses me, that when I came here to Jamie, I was thinking maybe there'd be players who are 27 who have been in my situation, who have gone on ups and downs roller coasters and are worried about what's going on there. But I looked around and you're all young. I came in and I was like, I like this. Because you're all young. You're all, you know, the opportunity where you can make a difference now. And it's not going to be where you were like me, where I was at 27 and thinking, shit, what do I do now? Where do I go? And then once I did get the tools, Maybe people had an opinion about me, or people and myself. It was a bit like I was maybe got to the top bit, and I maybe was on the way down. Now I had a fantastic career. I was lucky that I ended up at Man City and was involved with everything. And I don't want to change that. And I learned so much about myself. I get that. But to see you guys here doing this now, giving yourselves the opportunity to have the tools to help deal with things when they come up, is brilliant. I really, really believe that. And. For me, I try and promote that. We work, we don't necessarily work with the goalkeepers. They have their own, again, it could, because they're difficult with me. Mm -hmm. But we will forever, I, I'm a very big advocate of it. If, if someone said to me, I, I think I need help, do it, go and do it, go and get it, go and get help, always. And I think if you want to be the elite and the best, then that is the difference. Now, we look around this room here, I, I've heard, I spoke to 
Jamin and the guys, and you're all talented and, and, and got abilities and, and opportunities. Now your ability might not be the Champions League final. Your ability might be Championship. Your ability might be League Two, League One, wherever. But if you've got that little bit extra tool to help you, or whatever it is, that, that's vital, I think. And from my point of view, I'll, I'll be quiet in a bit. But from my point of view, seeing you guys here, I think is brilliant. It's it's the best thing. It's like practicing the touch as a five, six year old, or bouncing the ball off the wall when your mum used to kill you, or something like that at home. But you're, what you're doing is you're creating a, a, a tool or an ability to, to help you now. Mm -hmm. So if you can do what you're doing now, and, and all the work of the brain and training and help giving yourself these tools now, when you get to 27, 28, 29, you're on that crystal wave and everything's going great, and this little bit comes up, you'll have a, it will, that, that will happen, I promise you, that will happen. Because when I thought everything was easy, it didn't. It, do you, do you know how many players actually say that everything was going like this and then something happened? I hear it so much. Yeah.